Hello, today I'm here with another devlog for you guys to talk about fusion as well as a little bit of parties at the end of the video. But uh, the main focus will be on fusion, talking about some mechanical and some balancing changes we made to fusion to make it feel overall better for you guys. So to start off, we've changed how you unlock fusion. Instead of unlocking fusion at SQ414, which was the evil boo fight, end of the Bobbity Saga, you'll now be getting it at 408, which is um, the quest where Goku taught. Uh, Goten and Trunks how to fuse so makes a little bit more sense as well as the level unlocks like um, I think it was like level two, pretty much every level required you to beat a certain quest as well as get the XP to level up that's completely gone the only quest requirement is level one you know unlocking fusion um, so beyond that I'm going to show you guys how fusion works now with quick selection so cat if you go ahead and start fusing with me go ahead and go first person for this so we both just open quick selection Go to fusion and do it right there if i wanted to cancel i can hold this down and it will go ahead and cancel or i can press h i believe cat can press h as well as cat has a fusion cancel button in the quick selection i'll go ahead and show how that looks on cat's screen Alrighty, so this is how it's going to look if you're the fusion partner what you're going to see on the side is fusion cancel and at the top it'll say fusion with zeros on just a nice little you know message it's going to always say my name of course not really um, so it will say the controller's name up there, but if you go ahead and hold this, you'll cancel your fusion, or you can just go ahead and press H, this little easier option. Boom, you're out of the fusion. Just like that. So, yeah. So, I'm going to talk about some other things first. Well, the time limit for fusion has changed. So, basically, the uh, base time is still 15 minutes. The increase per level is basically this. I think we changed one level of the timer edition per level we just changed level seven made it just 30 seconds instead of a minute so slight reduction there but the rest of the changes make fusion timer significantly better for forms so how does the timer work what's different before when you go into form i explained it like a zip tie when i was talking to testers about this basically you do you put the zip tie tighter and you can't untighten it your timer would go down it go from like 15 minutes to 10 minutes you know assuming you were above the the time it would set for a form it was odd but tldr is like it, it, it felt kind of crappy if you jumped out of blue you're stuck with like three minutes of time and you're like there goes my fusion you know stuff like that so to to kind of make that feel better for you guys what we did is when you go into a form as you see in the top left i'm going to zoom in on that for you rate 1.25 what does that exactly mean for you well, the time goes slightly faster. It's a little hard to check. So let me go ahead and let's go on a higher form. So there we go. I went ahead and maxed fusion just for the sake of going into a form where you actually notably see the rate increase. So here we are in God form. You can see rate 2.5. You notice the time is in fact going about two and a half seconds per second. Basically, it increases the time reduction. So think about it like the form you're in is more draining, except instead of draining key, it's going to drain your time. So it makes you lose the time quicker. So the effective time, let me put that on screen for you. This is the or this is the old effective time on the live server, you know, current uh, version you guys are playing. And then this is the new time. So as you can see, and this is like without any time, um, without any of the leveling applied, just so the numbers are one to one, you know what I mean? So both of them do not account for the leveling, the, what leveling does for Fusion's time limit, just to keep it simple. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the timer is higher. Um, and that's, that's with doing the math of, okay, 15 minutes. If I'm in God form, I'm taking, basically it's just 15 minutes divided by 2.5 to get that number for God, right? So stuff like that. Um, I, we're pretty confident that this is going to make Fusion feel overall better because then if I drop out of God, back to normal time. So I still got my nine minutes there. So that's gonna feel pretty nice. Um, next up, we have some stuff about cooldown. So what what's changing about cooldown? Let me go ahead and drop out of Fusion real quick. So here I have dropped out of Fusion. I got a three minute, 27 second cooldown. Really weird, right? Like, where does that come from? So let me explain. Uh, here's the old cooldowns, and here's the new ones. Uh, you'll notice the old ones are a simple number. The new ones are not. They're a range. What does that range mean? That range, whew. So if you're at the start of that range, that means you were in fusion for zero seconds. 
you move along the range of that those two numbers as you're in fusion longer so if i was level one fusion if i went into fusion and immediately dropped out of it right uh, i know some people do that just to get the success xp so you go in you drop out right away instead of getting a 300 second timer you're instead gonna get a 150 second timer because you barely used it why should you get a 300 second timer for barely using it but alternatively if i stayed in it for the entire 15 minute duration my timer hits zero i get kicked out of fusion i get a 450 second cooldown so you end up with a higher cooldown than before but instead it's a range now so you're not going to be just going in immediately getting that high cooldown also the minimum range cooldown is applied to failing in fusion as well so if you fuse and fail it's going to be the same as if you just fused and went straight out in terms of time uh, so i hope that's a cool change i'm pretty happy about that myself because i know the cooldown is pretty rough on fusion especially at low levels where you're going to be failing a lot so one thing i'll additionally mention with fusion is that in the transformations page you will now see all the forms prefaced with fusion so i'm going to go ahead and set my level down to fusion one so we can see what that will kind of show for us so here we are back in fusion with level one and as you can see super saiyan fusion level two fusion level three so on and so forth with all the forms it will let you know what level you need to use them so you won't just kind of have to be asking guessing looking it up obviously it is shown in the techniques menu but this just cuts that out for you right there has also been some other changes to fusion xp in general uh, when you fail fusion instead of getting 10 xp you're now going to get 20 xp you will you will also be getting 50 success xp which is the same and you will be getting xp for the spectator so passive xp will be given to the spectator now let's talk about passive xp next up we have passive xp i'm going to preface this with we've already made some adjustments to passive xp the amount you'll get per form but um i'm a change that will feel good but accomplish you you won't end up getting more xp technically however let me just explain it sorry passive xp instead of being once every 60 seconds every minute is now going to just be every x amount of seconds that'll be on screen here for you so instead of getting 15 xp every minute in a god or primal form you're going to be getting one xp every four seconds which does in fact add up to 15 in a, mi in a minute 60 seconds right the simple math is take the xp per minute divide by 60 or sorry 60 divided by the xp per minute that's how we got these numbers we rounded like the tier 2 xp um but yeah it, it will just feel better and one way i've explained that it will help you get more xp actually is well what if you just we're in it for instead of you, you you just didn't hit that minute is basically what i'm getting at here but if you just don't hit that minute and then you miss out on the xp you miss out on all 15 xp because you didn't hit the minute instead you're just miss out on one xp or whatever right if you defuse right before that xp so i hope that will help passive xp be a little bit more consistent also that keeps it in line with kaioken so i think that just makes sense personally so now I'm going to show you guys how the fusion partner looks. So this is my view as a fusion partner. Okay. So I can move around, look at the controller, read the funny name and all of that. But if I just go ahead and sit here, what will happen is the camera will go ahead and clip to this, which, well, it's just going to be a view of the character. However, how does the camera follow? You've always been able to move the camera. As you can see, I'm moving here on the controller and well the the other screen is following my character around which ends up feeling better than the previous jitter like boop 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 kind of situation that was going on with the old one and um so i'll go ahead and stop here so you can kind of see what's happening as my camera moves the partner will have their camera follow them um resulting in a little bit more smooth uh view of the the, the fusion you know you get to watch this a little bit more smooth than you otherwise could so i'll go ahead and come back and if i do this move around da, 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 look at it like that so it's gonna stay like this for a moment until you know this is if you let take your hand off the mouse obviously you would adjust your camera if you were still moving your mouse but if you just go ahead and sit there your afk whatever it might be in fusion this is how it will go ahead and look so i figured this is a pretty nice change 
um, you know, this is using our new camera system, which we also use for quest dialogue. It, it feels pretty nice. Um, all things considered, we're gonna use this for some other things in the future here. But yeah, that's how that, uh, that's how that, that's how that feels and all that. Um, next up, I'm gonna talk about something else. So you might have noticed the hair. What exactly is going on with the hair? Um, well, I have this weird mix of hair. Let's go ahead and defuse so you can see what that's hap what 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 exactly is happening there. So you can see Mr. Scoot here, role playing as cat, um, has pink hair. So whenever we fuse, you can see how that looks. It merges the hair. Basically, the sides. You know, I tried some things. I tried to mix the hair where you'd have the sides of the partner colored like the partner didn't end up looking good frankly you can't really combine there's a couple hairs that worked but realistically choosing any given hair they're gonna look bad but anyway take the hair color from the partner so if you guys have both have black hair you're both gonna have black hair but if you decide to color it which i'd like to mention my main character is a full saiyan you're able to have slightly colored full saiyan hair uh 10 on the satch uh brightness excuse me not saturation so you can make your hair slightly colored so that's important to know. Um, another thing, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to a character with a more different skin tone because me and this guy practically have the same skin tone. It's hard to even tell. So I'm gonna go ahead and change his skin tone here. Alrighty, so here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and fuse with them and we're gonna see how it looks when it merges our skin tone. So what's happening here is it's taking 30% of the partner's skin tone and 70% of the controller's skin tone and mixing them. A 50-50 mix ended up looking a little bit weird it looks better when you have two different skin tones to keep most of the controller so you still resemble the controller the same way you have the primary hair color being the controller and the basically the you're, it's the controller with the partner kind of applied you know you get the little sides of hair you get the skin tone shifting let's go ahead and look how this looks on an arcosian or namekian or these kind of races because obviously they got a lot more colors other than just a skin tone to change Alrighty, so here he is with a quite different looking Arcosian than me. So, I want to point out that the color mixes aren't always going to be perfect, right? But the I, I feel like the fact that they can mix makes them cool. It's a cool concept. Um, surely, uh, it's not going to look great when you mix with every different character here and there. But the idea is there. We're going to go ahead and show some other um, races combining. And obviously, more complementary colors would work. Obviously, merging white, um, we call it the exoskeleton, the, like, primarily white part of the uh, Arcosians, we call that the exoskeleton. So when you're mixing white and black, you're going to get a gray, and that's just not going to look great. Um, yeah, it, the bean color, too, you know, you're, we were mixing blue and orange here, so, you know, keep that in mind. Alrighty, now we're two Namekians with different body colors. So, one thing you'll be able to do here is once you go ahead and fuse, you'll see the colors mix. One thing I want to point out is if you go, if you wanted to go ahead and not do this, you could go ahead and type slash cosmetic toggle fusion and you do fusion outfit. That's a uh, old thing, but if you wanted to get rid of that forced outfit, you can. You do fusion hair mix, it will turn off hair mixing. Obviously, my hair is not mixing right now, but you can turn off skin mix right here which will leave you back looking like just yourself, the controller. So that's an important detail, just in case you really don't like the mixing that's going on. Um, one thing we're gonna look at now is the name mixing. So I wanna mention, you know, name mixing still exists. You can see it's in the place of the character name here, and it will show in your menu as well as fusion name, and it'll show the character name right there. So with that in mind, you'll also, I mean, everyone's gonna see that same name, but it, right now we just have Scoot and Zerozon combining for Zeroot. But if we had a character name, that would properly mix. I'll go ahead and show that now. Now, mind you, um, I still have the Zerozon name, so it combines player name or character name if it exists. It will choose character name if it exists. But if it doesn't, it will just use your player name. So simple, Zareka. All right, another thing for fusion is the changes to enemy scaling whereas before all of the enemies would get the same scaling uh, all the time now based on the level of fusion the enemy scaling will bat will dynamically scale you know with your level so all seven levels will have slightly different scaling you know fusion makes you stronger so the enemies are made stronger to counter that in some way 
so before eh, all the enemies were roughly 25 percent stronger you know there's some math going on there but uh now they're gonna range from 15 percent stronger to 30 percent stronger using the same kind of scale at hand so at the end of the day they really only end up slightly stronger than they were before but you end up with them being weaker earlier on which will just feel better you know when you have a weaker fusion you won't be getting a double layer of smackdown from the enemies because you're you're weaker and they're the same level of strength that you'd be fighting if you had level seven that just didn't make sense next i'm going to talk about some changes to parties first uh the enemy scaling for parties has been adjusted a little bit the old numbers are here the new numbers are here pretty much just making it more fair all around so that it's you know pretty consistent the whole time um another notable thing is on screen damage dealt will show uh by that i mean percent damage dealt i'll show you some gameplay with that here in a moment but basically the percent damage dealt while you're in a party is just going to show on screen and that's going to help you make sure you're meeting the goal um also the ready up status of party members will show so you know uh, that will help you find out if everyone's ready or not without needing to check uh, a really cool quality of life thing that just came to mind today within the team was um, part being able to do parties or be in a party while doing a quest that you can't do with parties. It seems pretty silly in hindsight, but we just didn't think of it. Uh, if you're doing a dialogue quest, a collection quest, or a, no, a quest without a repeatable, you know, you can't do a party with that. You're doing waste training, you're doing challengers, any of these things parties is not something you can do basically what will happen is you'll be able to just be in the party and it will just be a party and that will be it and you'll just do the content and it will ignore the fact that you're in a party instead of just being like ah sorry you can't do this in a party so yeah uh, that would just make uh, the flow of it easier because if you do a party quest and then the next quest is like the dragon ball hunt in namek you'll be like oh let me just get out of this party get back in the party and if you have three other people in your party or it's a you know it's a four-man party that's uh gonna kind of kill that flow now uh very interesting change to parties in the way of the damage requirement so previously the damage requirement has existed to serve as you haven't you didn't do 35 percent damage so you don't get the quest completion reward or anything for that matter um so we're changing that the only thing the damage requirement will serve to do is gate you from completing the quest you will get the rewards let me explain so the reward pool will also not be reduced with this so um in a two-man party the rewards are tripled but if you don't meet the damage requirement the rewards are only going up by 50 percent 1.5 times right uh which is kind of annoying because the enemy is buffed for the sake of a two-man party and then you end up just getting slightly more tp for the for the solo there um so the way this is going to be addressed is say you did 34 percent and you did 35 percent um you won't complete the quest but you're going to get the tp you're not going to get the first time tp obviously because then you can just keep doing that you're going to get the repeat tp um, so you're going to get, you know, the normal TP you'd get from a party, but not the quest completion TP. So, which, when you complete the quest, you get both of those. So you're just going to get this part of the TP. And with that in mind, the TP will be halved. Everyone else's will remain unaffected. So everyone else will get the three times pool and you'll, everyone will get their share. You know, in this case, it'd be, what is that? 66% while you get 34%. That 34% will be cut in half. So that missing half that will be cut will just go into the ether. You know, the same way uh, it was previously, but now it's only half. So you're still getting a little bit for doing the party. Um, doing it in a party. But obviously, you didn't meet the requirements. So you're being punished for not doing the right amount of damage. Uh, the previously mentioned on-screen damage dealt will help you meet these requirements more frequently anyway. Hey there, thank you for watching this devlog. I hope you like some of the contents of it. Um, now I'm going to get into kind of where the update's at. You know, it's June. I feel you guys are now owed a status report, uh, as you will, on the update. Kind of where it's at and what's going on since it's June. This is the end of quarter two, right? 
So to get right into it, we're not going to be making the June release date. What we're going to be doing is shooting for July. Um, so to get right into kind of why, obviously that's a question. Um, I want to make sure the update is the best it can be, obviously, and I feel we need that extra time. You know, for things like finishing up final features, finishing, uh, mostly fixing bugs is more of it. Most of the features are done, if not in the needing some bug fixes stage. Um, I don't think there's, no, there isn't one thing we have to start. So, I mean, you'd hope at this point, right? Um, so we're pretty well just left with fixing bugs um and wrapping everything up so i really didn't want to go for a june release just to make that and then everything be buggy because of it and the update be worse off right i mean we, we've seen this happen in, in modern gaming and it's it's never a fun time uh so so we want it to be the best it can be on release uh so yeah i mean there's not really much else to say there i didn't want to blindside you guys with this at the end of june i felt it was necessary to provide this you know now with this devlog because it's the beginning of june this is the best time to do it if not a little bit earlier but this is the time we're doing it um so yeah thank you guys for sticking with us uh i assure you it will be in july you know this is the proper release month we'll be given a release date in due time so keep an eye out for that um thank you guys for sticking with us i hope you like all these devlogs this should be one of the last devlogs so yeah thanks for sticking around i appreciate you guys' support